I think that sport is about narratives, about storytelling. Of course, it's about glory. It's about um, competitiveness and athleticism. But for us as promoters, when we start our idea about an event, it's really almost like a cradle to grave mentality where you, know, you come up with an idea and you tell that story through the promotion of an event. And I just felt that we were getting to a stage where the narrative that we've built around each event and each fight or each match, when we got to deliver that at the most important moment, ultimately we didn't have control over finishing the job. And you know, we, we worked with some tremendous broadcasters, but I just made the decision, particularly in boxing, that sometimes the way in which I perceived an event should look or feel didn't because we didn't have that kind of editorial control. It's quite bold because ultimately, as a rights holder, when you sell rights to a broadcaster, they want to create the production and they own those rights. But in boxing, it was a bit different and there was things that were happening at the execution stage of the event that sort of just disheartened me a little bit and it wasn't done in the style that I wanted it to. Also, I spent my entire life on social media looking at the reaction of the fans and the viewers. And I had my own ideas about the content, the analysis and presentation team that I wanted to build. And I just decided with the timing of our new rights deal that whichever way we went, part of that deal was that Matrim Media would have to control live production for all our boxing. And it's something we're looking at across all our sports. From a competitive point of view, I don't look at the industry like that yet. I mean, we're not out there trying to be the best production company. It's, it's, it's more about completing the job that we started and being able to deliver it in the way that we feel will grow the sport, grow the IP value of the event, and ultimately provide fans with a better viewing experience. I think it's one of those um, ideas, as I have often, where I'll go, yes, this is what we're doing, and then everyone goes, How's he going to do that? Luckily, my sister is one of the best sports TV producers and, and uh, you know, directors in the business and was at Sky for a long time doing a lot of Premier League football. And the responsibility is on her for Matrim Media. But it was a huge job, particularly as you can see here, outdoors at Fight Camp, to start off that live production. And there's been a huge amount of work that's gone into that. But it's only really when you realise that amount of work, you think, are we mad? You know, normally you turn up at an event at the O2, Sky had the production in, we just sit down and enjoy the night here. But it's so rewarding, it's so fresh. You're involved in, you know, the script, the talent, the analysis, how the show's going to play out, the running order, and we can have control over how that looks. And, and for me, that, that was really important. After you realise the size of the job and, and the workload involved, it's where that creative freedom comes in. And you, it's almost like, it feels like you can just spread your wings and fly. You know, you're sitting down and there'd be times where, you know, to give you an example, you want a fight to slot in at a particular time during the night and, oh, we haven't got time because we want to do that. And, you know, content is absolute key. And we're not, we're not talking about, this isn't just a move for us for live production. This is a move across content, something that I'm very passionate about as well, and storytelling. But for the live production, it's, it's just, it's like a breath of fresh air. You know, to go in and to mould the show, how the team think it should be moulded, and how it should be built and moulded around the whole way the build-up has played out, the hype has played out, it's how it should be. It really is. Um, and, and I think this is a model that that's gonna, we're going to be particularly consistent with. Well, huge pressure because everyone not hoped we'd fail, but there was definitely a few people in the industry who said, you know, be nice if it didn't work out. So first of all, you need the best people, right? And that's people with experience. We're a very young team at Matrim, and we like to give people the opportunity to move through the business. But with something as important as this, you need steady hands. You need the best credible people that have been there and done it. And you know, people like Jim Bentley and Andy Flynn, you know, guys that have worked across BT, worked across Sky, these are people that, that you know, have, have produced and directed fight 
events and shows for many, many years. But sometimes they haven't been given the creative powers that we're given them. You know, sometimes you're working under a line manager or a director or you're being told how it should look. We don't want that. We want you to come up with the ideas. Yes, we've got our ideas, but you are the man for the job. You're the best at what you do. Show me what you want to do. I've got loads of ideas. We've, I've always wanted to do this. Well, now's the time. Now, this is the chance to try things. This is a chance to put a different look and a different feel into live boxing. And that, that's been, like I said, the most rewarding. So it's dealing with people who have a fantastic reputation, you have people that we know over the years that have worked for us, for broadcasters, that, that are very good at what they do and, and they've been absolutely spot on so far. Anytime you freshen anything up, now things become stale quite quickly, but ultimately the only thing that can stop that is change and doing things differently. Um, and I feel like boxing, live production for boxing has become incredibly stale from ring walks to lighting to talent to analysis, to content. It's the same every single week. And we wanted to bring in, particularly away from the, the nuts and bolts of production, the talent team. We wanted to bring in people completely different that hadn't been associated with a broadcaster for boxing for years and years. There's someone that was fresh, someone that's different, someone that's gonna bring a new energy, a new audience to what we were doing. And you know, we've done that with the likes of Maya Jama, obviously Laura, Laura Woods is one of the best presenters in sport. And Mike Costello from the BBC, who's, who has been a traditional boxing broadcaster, but is the voice of boxing. Tony Bellew, Chris Lloyd, Darren Barker. You know, such a great analytical team of people involved in this, but fresh. You know, I feel like some broadcasts get, very, get tired very quickly. And for our boxing, I just felt that it was getting tired. And now I look at it and I'm walking around with a smile on my face because I just, it's so fresh. And not everyone will like it. You're always going to get moans, and I see that on social media. But show me a better production and better presentation and analytical team in British boxing. It's not even close. And we're only just beginning. Well, first, the access is key because we're doing it anyway. I mean, we spend our whole life behind the scenes, and we spend our whole life producing content for our YouTube channels and Fight Week build up and our broadcasters as well. There are so many stories to tell in boxing. And through the pandemic, you've seen the growth of a lot of shoulder programming and, and content create creativity from other sports that I feel have hugely benefited their growth. Drive to Survive is probably the, the greatest example of that in Formula One, where it brings you into a world that you know nothing about. It educates you about the sport. It engrosses you in the sport and it makes you invest in that sport, emotionally, mentally, maybe financially. I could not stand Formula One. I watched Drive to Survive. I know all the teams, I know all the drivers, I know all the politics, you know, I know, I know about the, the, the mechanics, that, and, and, that, and, and now I'm a Formula One fan. You know, other, other you know, um, the Tiger Woods documentary, I've seen some other boxing documentaries, um, The Last Dance, a great example. This is compelling sports content that I'm very, very passionate about. And there is so much content to unfold in boxing. So many unbelievable stories to be, to be told. And we want to tell those stories. But we have access like no one else can have access. You know, we've had approaches from so many production companies saying we want to deliver a behind the scenes access to the world of boxing. It would not drive to survive out of the park there's that, there's that much drama in this sport. But no one can get that access like we can get it. So why not do it ourselves? So away from the live production, there's the content business as well. Developing documentaries, developing formats, of which there are so many conversations ongoing. It won't always be we do it or it doesn't exist. Anything that benefits the sport, our business and our broadcast partners in terms of shoulder programming, you know, we won't limit ourselves in that capacity. But obviously, while we have the best people to do that and we have the access, why not do it through Matrim Media? I think we have a little bit of naivety about us as a production company because we have excellent people, but you know, we're, we're moving into a world, like I said, we're not trying to be competitive or 
we're, we're just, it, it's an arm of the business that is enabling us to do something differently and to do it our way. Yes, we want to be the best production company in the world, of course, but we're, we're a much bigger business than that and it's not the be all and end all for us. Um, I do think that freshness enables us to come in and do things differently and to use the experience that we've gained through those live events and through those live productions of what we've seen and what we would change and what we think people want us to change. And that's the key. Now, for us, the boxing is an experiment where we're saying to fight fans, we've listened. I know, I've seen you, you know, into my social media for years and years with your comments about what you like, what you don't like, you know, what analysis you like, what presentation team you like, and we're putting it all together. And I think that's what makes it so attractive as well for a broadcaster. Because don't forget, here on the, the boxing side, DAZN put their faith in us as the, in this deal. It wasn't just a rights deal, it was a deal that included Matra Media doing the entire production for all live boxing. And that was, a, that was a big move for them, but they believed in us that we knew what to deliver to provide value for fight fans, and, and we've done it. I'm a storyteller, that's what I am. I'm a salesman who tells stories about fights, about fighters, and doing that via documentaries is something that I'm unbelievably passionate about. Um, it's what I watch on TV. I love sports documentaries when they get it right, behind the scenes action, you know, something that makes you invest in an athlete or a sport or a tournament. That, as, as, a, as an event creator, is the most powerful tool in terms of getting people and getting people interested and engaged in, in your IP. That is something that we continue to work very, very hard on. Thankfully now, broadcasters are as interested in that side of content as they are sometimes in the live event itself. And you look at some major, you know, the likes of Pitch and, and companies like that, they've been doing that for years, creating content and selling it to broadcasters. They used to give it away and there wasn't really a market for it. Now, you know, with the depth of, of different platforms out there, it's becoming extremely uh, profitable and viable for a production house to not just place that content, but to sell that content. And if you can monetize that content whilst letting it build the interest into your live event, what a fantastic model.